Hey everyone, Raider here. Hope you're all doing great and having a fantastic day. It is time for week 10 of weekly Q&A where we get your Samsung questions answered. Um, no timestamps this week as we're only going to address one question and that is from Holly. And Holly writes in, can you please do a demo of Adobe Premiere Pro on the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360? So that's what we're going to talk about this week. And I'm sorry for the lack of content this past week. Um, I got a corneal abrasion in my left eye on Saturday. So I've been pretty much out of commission pretty much all this week. That's why we're only doing one question. And we'll get back to regular Q&As next week. But I definitely want to keep these videos out every week. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So I've got Adobe Premiere Pro loaded up on the Book 3 Pro 360. And I'm not showing my face this time because my left eye is completely red right now. So um, we have this loaded up. I've got a bunch of 4K footage over here to the left in our media browser. All right, we've got a 4K sequence set up and I've got all these clips loaded up. I've got some sample text loaded. We've got a Samsung logo, um, some audio down on the bottom. And it looks like we're working with like three or two or three different uh, 4K video clips here. Pretty similar to what we did with the DaVinci Resolve demo. And I've noticed that navigating through the user interface is pretty good. However, I'm not a big fan of the trackpad on the Book 3 Pro 360. Um, it's not that it's sluggish inside the UI. It just has kind of a weird response to it. Uh, I definitely prefer using my Logitech mouse. I'm using the trackpad right now. It's all right. I'm moving back and forth. It seems fine, but it just seems a little slow. Um, not the type of slow where like, you know, it's your mouse pointer speed. It just, I don't know how to really put it into words. It's just not quite as in tune as with DaVinci Resolve. However, the rest of the experience has been just fine no issues at all. And I will say that dropping in footage, going up here and scrubbing through our playhead, let's go ahead and take a look at it. I mean, it scrubs butterly smooth. There's no problems. You can see here the footage is staying caught up with it. And I should also mention, I am not using proxies. This is raw footage. So all 4K footage here on a 4K timeline. Yeah, and it's able to scrub through pretty good. So let's go ahead and do an export of this real quick, right? So I'm gonna grab all these files. All right, let's do that. Instead of grabbing the sequence, I can go up here to export. And while we're doing this, let's go ahead and check on the temps and usage of the system real quick. Looks like it's hitting the GPU pretty good as we're going through. It was at 54% there for a second. CPU loads really low. Temperatures are really low, 65 degrees Celsius. That's pretty much idle temperature. So it's not stressing the system at all while we're just sitting here doing the editing chores. So let's go ahead and go back to our export here. Um, I'm going to just drop this on my desktop. Hold on. There we go. All right, go ahead and save that. And we're going to go ahead and leave it at H.264. You can see here our frame size is 4K, right? And it gives us all of our properties here to the right. And let's go ahead and start the export. And before I do this, I do want to say this is a 10 minute long clip. And with DaVinci Resolve, it took about 23 and a half minutes to export a similar file. We had the same footage up on DaVinci Resolve. So we're kind of doing apples to apples comparison here. So let's go ahead and take a look here. We'll start the export. 13 minutes, I'm starting a timer on my phone as well. All right, look at this, wow, this is really impressive. Six minutes and 20 seconds. Let's go ahead and check out the system utilization real quick. GPU's getting pretty hard and CPU's not getting hard at all. Pretty much the exact opposite of what we saw with DaVinci Resolve. With Resolve, we saw the CPU getting hit pretty hard and the GPU wasn't. I will say this render time is looking a lot more impressive than DaVinci Resolve. Seven minutes left. I've got the timer going on the phone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back a couple times. We'll check on the thermals and then we'll check out the final export time for this 10 minute long 4K clip. All right. We're at about the halfway point right now. It says four minutes and one second left. We're at 53%. Let's go ahead and check on the temps and the utilization real quick. Not too bad. GPU 30%, 5%. Just kind of going back and forth a little bit. CPU is staying real low. I should mention too, I'm in high performance mode. And I am plugged into power, trying to get the most out of the system. And so far, I'm really impressed with these thermals and stuff. This is really looking good. 82 Celsius. All right, not too bad for a render. So we will come back when the export is done, and we'll take a look at our finished file. All right, here we go with our completed file. Turn the volume down a little bit there. Yeah, it looks good. Looks like it caught all the footage. Had our sample text at the beginning. All right, let me go ahead and pause this real quick. So very impressive with Adobe Premiere Pro on the Book 3 Pro 360. 
I should mention this laptop's on sale right now too. I think they took it down like 300 bucks. So it's like 15.99. Uh, definitely worth it. I'm, I'm really impressed with how well it handled Adobe Premiere Pro. So if you have any questions or comments about today's video, please drop them down in the comments section below. We'll be back to regular Q and A's next week. Hopefully I'll start getting back to videos this weekend as well. Should find out on Friday. I really do appreciate your time. And as always, thanks for watching.